Good morning, everyone. Well, I'm glad that you all shared um, and exchanged some information on how you uh, um, and uh, your community uh, you know, deal with communications and your challenges. Um, I'm going to try to help uh, and see where you can you can you know uh, use these efforts and and maybe the tools that you can you can add on to your communications uh, plans that you are working with right now. I noticed that everybody is pretty much on Facebook. Um, I'm just curious the reason why you're on Facebook. Was there a survey done with your community saying that this is the best way to communicate with them? Because um, that's important too. Is that you have an audience and you want to speak to your audience. But what are they using to listen to you, right? So if you're assuming that it's a Facebook, and like some of you said that you don't have much traction on your page, uh, there's not much activity, maybe it's because your audience is not really on Facebook. Um, so what I'm gonna do right now is, um, uh, Danielle uh, shared with me some of the, the questions, some of the concerns that were done uh, via a, a survey that uh, the PRT did a while back. Um, so I'm going to address these uh, these uh, issues, these topics, and communications. And if, obviously, if you have any other questions uh, at the end of our session with um, with the other two um, uh, TDAs, then we we could we could address those concerns. So basically, a lot of you want to get your message on what is a CLC, right? So it's like a, the elevator pitch. Um, I, I know that the team here works on the communications, different infographics that that they could share that you could share with your community to it make everybody understand what a CLC is, what they do, why you're there. The important thing with a pitch is, is it has to be short, concise, clear, a clear message so people understand and in and, and, and a very simple vocabulary. Um, basically what a, a pitch is, is that you want to introduce your organization, your CLC, um, you know, and, and, and to who, who, who is the audience, audience you're trying to pitch this information. Um, explain what a CLC is, what the benefit of the CLC is, and, and why your community, your community should be engaged in, in your activities or events, uh, programs that you do uh, have at, at a CLC level. And, and all this is basically, it's like, you know, what we call marketing a unique selling proposition, your USP. So it's, it's really a very clear phrase, sentence, message that you want to want to get out. Um, that's one of the, the, uh, the questions that uh, Danielle shared with me, and, you know, some of the challenges on how to pitch the CLC. You could do this in different, you could do an infographic, you could do a simple poster. Um, and what I think also is important is that um, many of you have expressed that you have Facebook pages, your schools have Facebook pages, they have websites. I, I'm not sure if you all have a landing page about the CLC. That's, um, uh, that's something, that's a platform that you should uh, leverage and, and capitalize with your own communities, is you have a website I mean, the CLC is part of the school. It's, it's the same thing. It's not two different organizations, not two different identities. It should be considered as one. So that's really important is to have um, a landing page on your website, on your school website, again, if you have one, and just to have all this information, just to you know, show, show, show your community what you've done. It could be on visuals. It could be pictures. It could be infographics. That's really important is you've got to get your backing from your school to have this on their web, website landing page, have a landing page for the CLC. Um, now the other um, the other um, question was the tools that you use. Like, what are the marketing tools? What are the channels? I mean, not everybody is, seems to be using Facebook in a, in a really efficient way. That's great. I mean, you know, we, a lot of people are on social media, whether it be Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever works with you. Again, this is you need to assess this with your audience, with your community. Not every not not every community is is into Facebook. I mean, that's something that you need to 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 look to with your community. And, and how do you do this? I mean, I think you should, you know, uh, annually, maybe twice a year, have a survey. Use the, the, the back to school, um, you know, have general assembly, when you meet the teacher, parent teacher night, use those, those important events, those annual events at your school to, to get feedback from your community, from the parents. Well, how, how would you like to be communicated? I know um, my, my children were at, at, at a school and, and we used to get these letters at the beginning of the year asking, you know, permission if your child could be on the website, newsletter, yada, yada. Um, and how do you want to be communicated? Do you want to send, have an email? Do you want a newsletter? Do you want a hard copy? Do you want to be on social media? So this is important. I'm, I'm sure many schools must, must have this approach. But if you don't, maybe you, could, you, you should consider it and sit down with your, your administration, your team, your staff. And say, well, hey, let's let's help. Let's try to get the word out and communicate more efficiently, um, and see what our audience are want and what their needs are. 
So some of the channels, uh, okay, Facebook, you got Instagram, you got all the social media platforms, you have your website. The website is there 24 seven. You got to leverage that website. Uh, face to face, uh, all the events that your school has at annually. I mean, we all have that uh, back to school, the general assembly, parent teacher night, uh, fundraiser, a holiday breakfast. Every, every uh, annual event that ha happens on a regular basis, these are events that the CLC should have also uh, a, a place where they communicate their information. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not, and I don't mean your, you know, like your typical you have a table and just have flyers. But you need to have more of a uh, an engaging type of, of a workshop. So let's say some of you have the brigade primaire program in your school. Well, maybe you would you want to have like you know a little atelier, a little workshop happening, having kids cook a little recipe and say, hey, look, these are one of the programs we have in our school. And you know your child could be part of it, and you know, and, and whatever. So it, it's really important to to actually showcase it and animate what you do, uh, whether it be a program, uh, whether it be an activity, after school activity, uh, events. So that's that's really important. And then you know, parents and, and families, I think they're they're more visual, and then, and when they see that, it's like, oh wow, this is interesting. I didn't know about this. My child didn't tell me about it. So these are these are things that are in, uh, you're important to use. So basically, the channels that you need to use that you could use that are available and are you know advertising. You could advertise in a local paper if if you could get a freebie, all the best, all the better. Sometimes they do uh, offer like some uh, some free advertising last minute uh, if, for certain events if you want to take that approach. Uh, social media content marketing. Basically, content marketing is um, you could do it through your social media. Have like a story. Um, if you have an event and and you want to like promote what you did in the event and 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 the feedback from from that event, just showcase the event. Write a little blurb. Oh my gosh, look at what you know what our school did. This is the activity we had. And this is the feedback we got. And you know and always have it direct to, to a, a certain page or 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 a picture or an album. It could be a photo album, whatever whatever that you use. Um, email marketing, obviously, email works works well. Uh, you could use um, a newsletter. And, and going back to the email marketing, what I wanted to say is that um, I, I'm not sure if you all have access to the email list database of your schools. Um, I understand that sometimes it, it, they are confidential, but maybe use your uh, secretary of the administration. If you have something that you want to promote, uh, an event, a program, whatever it is, use that, uh, that newsletter of the school to in integrate your CLC activities and events upcoming. Um, that, that's really important. I know somebody was mentioning that they wanted to do their own newsletter. That's great. But again, if you have uh, the information already, can you use existing platforms that already have a big traffic, which is your school, and integrate that information into you. So you want to do your own newsletter because you have a following, you have a database, that's great. But you should not neglect the, actual, the big mass news that I got from the school to the parents and to the community, because that's that's really important. You have more eyes, more visibility. Um, you know, face to face, of course, it, it works well because you know a lot. It, it, it's a it's a stat that over 86% of people, uh, when something is recommended or testimonial is given, people will have uh, the tendency of oh well maybe I'll try it or maybe I'll come to the event. So again, face to face, use your ambassadors. Use your parents and your and your family and your community that come to, to your events on a regular basis. Use them to spread the word. These are really um, these are the most the most impactful uh, people to communicate your, your your information. So again, use your existing volunteers. Use your uh, the parents that you know come in and out of the school, come to your events. Um, ask them to share them with their network, with their community, with their friends, with their families. This is really important. Um, Again, like I mentioned before, use the events of the school. So again, it could be the home and school events, the PTO events. Uh, I know they have a lot of a lot of things that go on in the school fundraising uh, activities. Uh, again, team up with them, and, and and that's really important. Is that at the beginning of the school year, you need to gather your team, and your team is not just you, because I know a lot of you are are, are pretty much on, on your own, but it's really the principal the staff, the students, the student councils, the little committees that you have. You might have like these, these extra committees and at the school doing something 
some some something of some sort. So gather them. These are really important. Again, the more the more people you have backing your story, backing your information, backing your message, it will help you communicate this further. Mm-hmm. Yeah, perfect. Um, the other thing, what I, I I like also in terms of a channel is um, have a have a an evening uh, where parents share their you know, concerns, what they want. Maybe you, maybe there's something that, you know, you use it and tapped into, like say, oh, maybe I should have an event to talk about, I don't know, homework or help, whatever it is. And again, this is something that you could do with the community as part of the, the school. Uh, but, you know, it, it's something that you're getting your, your volunteers involved. So that's really important. Um, the other thing that Danielle mentioned is how, how do you get these volunteers, right? Because that's a challenge. I know, I know when I was in, in school, that was a challenge. Um, a volunteer, again, it, it's just, you need to ex- use your existing volunteers, whether it's two, three, four, or five, and ask them to share with the networks. Um, maybe do a recognition, a volunteer recognition day, or, or a brunch, or, or supper, or, or coffee. Always recognize your volunteers. You know, they need to be appreciated. And also, what I think was, was great is, is ask them for feedback. And, and when, when you get a, a feedback from a volunteer, that, that's also something for you to, you know, like, it opens up oh, well, maybe we could do, do, do this. We didn't think of doing that. And another thing about volunteers trying to recruit volunteers is um, you could have a suggestion box at school. Like, what would you like to see at school? What is it that you, you, you know, what are your needs? Um, you know, and obviously you have to have flexible events because not everybody doesn't work. People do work. So you have to have flexible schedules for them to volunteer different times in the year, be able to have parents that do work uh, in the day, you know, volunteer, whether it be an hour, two hours, whatever it is. And also have, um, you know, like depending on what event you're doing, maybe have a volunteer coordinator, somebody that's going to help you coordinate an event and get these volunteers, you know, to help you out at different uh, events. And what's important with the volunteers as well is, you know, matching them with certain skill sets. So some people are more, you know, the better in doing creating a poster or, or you know, spreading the word or just, you know, organizing the, the actual, um, uh, you know, room for the event. So just match their skills with the with with the, the tasks, and that, that probably, you know, that that's also appreciated as well. Um, I know many of you also talked about the calendar, communications calendar. Um, I think that's really important. Uh, again, uh, schools have a typical annual event. If you set these before, if you have a calendar and you know where you're going, um, you know at least at least every three months, that's easy for you to 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 manage instead of waiting to the last minute. You could um, you know pre-program stuff uh, even Facebook. Um, you could um, you know uh, pre. Uh, uh, you could post your post your post, but we schedule them ahead of time. Events and actually, you're talking about events. Uh, what I wanted to mention is, um, your events are really important, and they should also be included in the website and also Facebook pages. Um, I'm not sure if you all know, but you could create events in Facebook and all your your different activities and 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 and, and days and and programs that you have could be included in there. So that's really important. A communications calendar will help you keep yourself organized. It will it will be consistent. It helps you get uh, you know content before the, before before the time, um, and it helps everything run sm- smoother. Um, and at the same time, what you with with a calendar, if there you know you could always adjust. If there's something that you know, oh my gosh, so a last minute thing happens, which happens all the time. Well, you could add it into your calendar. So I think it's really important to follow a calendar. You can do something in Google Sheets. You can have templates that you can download online. Just use your Google Calendar. I mean, there's all different uh, different types of, uh, of uh, tools that you could use. Um, I think I covered okay. a couple of questions, if there's any other one. Okay. Well, just to get back to, just to finish up, we have a minute. Is um, I, When we were speaking yesterday about comms calendars, you were just saying that it's kind of like the life cycle of events like back to school, mm-hmm. you know, Christmas play, uh, spring break, whatever it is, like, so that's kind of what ends up in your calendar that you've kind of mapped out the, the annual usual um, school cycle so that you can kind of say, oh, it's teacher appreciation week, oh, we should get on that and be included in our messaging to thank teachers um, so that you have it kind of planned out in advance because mm-hmm. that kind of helps the not last minute rush that I never have time for this, that you just maybe have a schedule and that maybe it can be already programmed into your Facebook that it posts automatically so you can spend like a little bit of prep time. You don't have to worry as much about it. Mm-hmm. All right. So thank you, Carolina. No problem. Um, we'll see if, I guess we, sh- we should have gone for an hour and a half because an hour is 
pretty tight on us. Uh, we're going to move on to Ruby, who manages, I believe, four Facebook pages right now. Um, Ruby, do you want to tell us about the pages you're managing and how that's going for you, and how did you end up with four Facebook pages? Yeah, well, the um, the four three pages are from my schools, uh, the high school and my two feeder schools. Um, and they all have their own different story to them. Uh, one I created with uh, our CLC committee um, from, from scratch two months after we started. Uh, one was already in existence and one of them uh, was completely misunderstood by the school and it was thought of to be just a messaging tool between the PPO members. So uh, one of them and my fourth one is the uh, table de concertation. We don't have one in our region but we still want to share all the uh, the wonderful things that are happening. So we're trying to get that moving and we've done pretty well in the last three months. We've got about 120 followers so far. So um, what I really wanted to touch on though with Carolyn was saying is that the audience doesn't know necessarily that you exist or that your pages exist. And that's what I found starting this uh, like three and a half years ago. People didn't know Facebook pages existed. Everyone was on Facebook in our community. What we needed to do, and I asked my principals at the time, was take the uh, Like Us on Facebook logo and put it everywhere. Um, the secretaries send out emails to the parents on the signature at the bottom, Like Us on Facebook with the little logo, um, on our monthly calendars that we send home. Put it on there. It's everywhere now. On our website, we have the link to the Facebook page. And in our Facebook pages, we have the links to our web pages. Everything needs to be uh, connected together. That's really the best way to get your traffic going. Um, we have a thing in the cafe, uh, TV in the cafeteria. Again, even there it says, like us on Facebook. So the parents come in, they see it, and they will start liking it that and sharing it the best way to get traffic on your page i think is putting up the pictures of their children they love it that's the one thing i can tell you put up pictures of children and they will like tell each other the friends will be like hey there's your son and they're tagging each other back and forth they want grandma to see it they want to when the uh the parents you know the, the child had been taken away and the mom lived in uh, in Nukalut or somewhere up in the wild wild north and that was the only way she ever got to see a picture of her child I mean her child was actually up without us really realizing it and she got to save those pictures of them so it's just a fantastic tool if you can just link it in with everything else um, just a question so I guess you had um, all the permission slips through the school office yeah, every, uh, every September when all the permission slips go home, uh, it's just part of the culture that there's a, um, a letter says, can you be on social media, yes or no? Uh, the secretary puts all that together and then we get the short list of no, these people cannot be. Uh, when I get pictures from the teachers, they are the ones who have made sure that none of the children that shouldn't appear don't appear. And if I do take pictures at an event, I make sure to ask the teachers who should not be on it. And if I'm not sure and I just want to take a group shot, well, you take the shot from the back, from the back of their heads, so at least you can see what's going on. Or even from the top of their heads, sometimes that's just fun. They can see the work that's going on. Or um, another trick is, we've done a few shots in class we didn't want the child to feel left out so you put the child on the edge of the picture that way you can crop them out but they don't know that they're not there but they still feel part of the group they haven't been excluded or yeah there, there was another one that we did we put a child right in front of the other child but, you know they were, he was still smiling he was happy so there, there's little tricks you can get away with not showing certain kids on facebook so i just want to ask you something that was brought up in the intro is just that how are, how are you managing the relationship between like presenting a CLC and a school Facebook page like how is that and do you recommend it, that being the platform for the CLC on a school page? We don't have an actual CLC page everything that happens all the events the school board notices the, the parents notices it all appears on the school page itself what I've done is put the CLC logo at the very top of the Facebook page so when you come on our Joliet High School community or whichever other page you have that little CLC logo that is there and the CLC logo appears on our websites as well so 
it's again it's interconnected but it doesn't have its own place i find that when you have too many platforms to share things on you forget to share things on certain other platforms and you're spreading your audience everywhere so if you can really put everybody all the eggs in the same basket more or less then it's a lot easier to get those people going if you've got three different pages for one school you're splitting up your audience you don't know if everyone's getting to see all the information that they do um, whether it's my elementary schools or my high school um, I have I take the actual monthly calendar that's sent home every month and I just take content from there uh, free screening free eyeglass screening is coming up uh, in next week I put up this cute little picture a couple of days ahead of time letting people know pre-k and kindergarten guys don't forget your kids are getting their eyeglasses done um, parent teacher nights coming up their school dance is coming up run those posts two three times um, everything is really on there. Uh, we have uh, wonderful relationships with our Maison des Jeunes. I put up their activity calendars and I have them coming on us and sharing our stuff and I share their things. Same thing with community partners. Um, they're having an activity for a lunch or something or they want to take kids to a play. Again, I will take their stuff and put it on there. So it's really become community related. It's become inter-school related whatever's going on it's all on there definitely it's definitely about the connections and that helps promoting it can mm -hmm. you share with us some of your work uh, definitely that's how you yeah, get kind of more that. exposure is when you're kind of tagging people and maybe you can show us some of that on our Facebook um, tagging you... is is a wonderful thing tagging is the best thing ever since sliced bread but you have to do it <laughs> what you want to do I don't know if you can see this uh, the peer advisors one okay this is uh, an annual activity that we do with our feeder schools um, this is one of their um, outings that we do we take them on an overnight all our, our, our um, sec one students get to do an overnight stay what we ended up doing is tagging our feeder schools so you can see them that they're in blue if you go on them you can find be able to go on their page as well um, we tagged the Havre Familial, which is where they slept over. And that, in the, you have notifications on Facebook. On the notifications, it will say, the Havre Familial saw your post, which means that it ended up on their notifications. They came on our page, they liked it, they shared it to their page, which creates more traffic. So everyone who goes to the Havre Familial because they want to rent a chalet or whatever, sees that your school went there. So in a way, it's kind of review of a review for them, and at the same time, they're like they're they'll give you a freebie down the line because they like the the free advertising too. It all works. It makes everybody happy. <laughs> um, what tools yeah. are you using to manage four pages at once? Time. How, how much time <laughs> does it take? I, that was my time. question. Um, <laughs> I, I've tried to really organize it because in the morning, the first thing I do when I get in the morning, I turn on the computer and that's the first place I go to. I'll go to my notifications in the corner. I don't know if I can show you them, hold on. Um, this one here, notifications, they're all in blue and you can get many of them, but it gives you such important information. Um, this one here, La Maison des Jeunes liked what we did for them because we put up their activity calendar. So they liked us, they're creating traffic for us over there. You have who liked us in certain posts. Uh, we're saying thank you to all our wonderful teachers. Took the post from the, the school board and we just popped it up on ours. And I forgot your question. Please ask me the question. You know what, that actually reminds me of <laughs> that when someone likes something on your page, you and if it's a business page, you can invite them to like your page. Like after they like one of your yes. posts, then you can engage them to, it's so it's kind of about the conversation too, right? When people leave comments that you try and get back to them and like, so that creates more traffic and algorithms that you're on the, and, and yeah, I, would, you, I would just, no, I was just gonna say, I would add that probably a lot of the pages that, that, I, that I subscribe to on Facebook and I subscribe to a lot of your pages, they, um, they tend to be personal pages. So you don't get a lot of those resources, like you can't track, like you just showed mm -hmm. up your- um, Insights. Your, your, in, your what? It's called Insights. Insights. Yeah. Um, know who's, who's looking at it and things. And that's, that's 
um, if, if you would, I guess, recommend, would business page would be the way to go to me? I think it has to be a business page. It can't be a personal page because in the business page itself, in the insights, you're going to get your followers. You're going to be able to see who liked what the best. And that's where one of the, the things came up is by comparing the posts. If there's a post with just words, people will not click on it. People will just pass it by. Even if it's just a clip art, uh, a little image of whatever, and I do holidays all the time. Uh, happy Valentine's Day. Everybody's got a little Mickey Mouse and it's running and it's telling the whole community we love you. They like it. They're going to answer us back and tell us they love us. They say happy, happy summer to us. Um, you need those things. You need a picture. You're going to see by in your insights what you need for your community, for your culture to, to get things going. And you could even see how many people unlike you. You don't want to know that, but you do. And we've been very lucky. We, we haven't had too many of those. But there's so many things in the insights. I mean, you can go on for hours about this. So, um, But you do need that business page. One of the important things for a business page is, are, can you still see my screen? Where is that Joliet Elementary? Yeah. Okay, well, right under Joliet Elementary, there's the hashtag, and it says JES Elementary. That's what you would use to tag my page in, or that's what I would use on your business page so that you would see, so that, you know, we can tag each other. On a personal page, you don't have that. I would have to tag your name, and sometimes I can't even get your name because you've put it private. So there's no way that I can ever communicate with you. So mm -hmm. on your business page, this is what you want to do. So before you start writing your post, go figure out what this lovely hash that this lovely tagline is so that you can have that information while you're writing your posts. So just to wrap up, we do have Brian coming up. Is um I kind of do you feel like it's a kind of trial and error thing that you know just to see what works some some posts were, you know are real I, I don't think it's a trial and error. I think it's traffic. You need content. You need to use whatever it is to get yourself seen. You've got to tell people you exist and you've got to have something appear every three days. Schedule your post to run at six o'clock in the morning. You're gonna get up to midnight, people liking you, people running with your thing and sharing it. Because you've got the breakfast crowd taking their coffee, you've got the lunch crowd, you've got the water cooler crowd, you've got the people having their wine at night seeing your post. So run it early in the morning, you get all day traction, and every three days, if you can, Thing, if you're just gonna go get um, something, uh, it, it's National Flag Day. Happy Flag Day, people! Uh, have a happy summer. Uh, wish I was on the beach. Did you have your coffee today? If yeah. you've got nothing from your school board to share, or from a teacher to share, or from your monthly calendar, because there's an event, just put anything. People love it. They'll respond to you. This is the final question. Um, I just want to know about the messaging that you see on your school page, but also the TLC within that. Do you, are you distinguishing them? Are you seeing them as one thing? I'm sorry, I don't understand. What, um, do you mean? what you're saying is Jolly, the, the page belongs to Jolly Elementary School. Yeah. So it's actually the school Facebook page. And within mm -hmm. the TLC is part of that. I mean, you're doing a lot of the school work, but is there also your conscious of TLC being promoted within that, or are, do you see them as separate things or together? They're you know? together. I, I find that in our in our culture, in our schools, the CLC is just part of it. Naturally, it I, to, to separate it would really be to to break up that vibe. And yeah. we've tried really hard to get the three of them to work together. Right. But do you so. find within the school page, it's kind of like half is about the CLC, or like it? I mean, you're not really measuring. <sighs> All the events that I've put together, whether it's culture à l'école or like if an artist's come or something like that, there will be pictures of that going on. Like 80% of the time, a CLC activity will be promoted in, in the page. But there's other stuff as well because you don't have enough. You, you Teachers might not take pictures or videos, so you need to supplement. So it really has to be a mix of both the school and the CLC. So hopefully you can all say a bit later if you have questions for... Uh... Ruby and Carolina. Thank you, Ruby. We're going to move on to Brian talking about his um, South Shore Vibe TV show, which is available on the internet. Um, you can send it out if you want to check Community it out. Community TV, go for it. So Brian, uh, uh, do you want to just start morning. how this has developed and uh, 
how you're slotting guests and how it ties into CLC? Well, uh, what I would invite everyone to do when they uh, are, get time is to Google community television, uh, TV communautaire, Quebec, Canada, and just read up on the history. And it talks about how um, when cable companies started to come in, uh, how you know CRTC, Canada, Quebec, uh, they wanted the cable distributors, so for example, Videotron, Roger, to have to have a certain amount of money that goes back to the community. And so you know, there's many in Quebec uh, community televisions. So the journey began around 2015 for uh, the RBCLC, Richelieu Valley CLC. Um, and we, um, we were part of the Tab Jeunesse, Securité Alimentaire, Tab Petite Enfance. And um, there was a representative at coming to some of those meetings from TVL Neuf, which was a community television station. They were only running French program in the Richelieu Valley, but we had four schools in that area. And so I began appearing in French, uh, speaking about some of the different projects and initiatives we were doing. And uh, yeah, go ahead, Daniel. Yeah, so that's when you decided to pitch the idea? Well, basically, so, you know, the more I would appear on the TV and talking, uh, you know, some of our, first of all, some of our partners and French school boards, uh, they don't have community learning centers. Uh, some of the projects we're doing, for example, like coding or, different things, art inspired, you know, it, it, we were doing things that sometimes can be very innovative, very cool. Uh, so then when we're on TV and it's being shared, uh, and then about two years ago, uh, I was here in the South Shore in St. Hubert and a person came up to me and said, uh, you know, uh, would you be interested in having a coffee with someone who's on the board of directors for uh, TVRS, the, the South Shore television uh, community TV station? And, you know, Part of our job as community development agents, for me, it's always like you're a roving reporter. It's one of the beauties of the job. Any project or opportunity, just like coding, when Danielle was at Kid Co's Jeunesse and I knew nothing about coding, when we go to meet different partners and go for a meeting and coffee, it's opportunity. It's something new. And so I went and I met and I learned that, you know, they had a CRTC patent for English and French programming, yet they only had French programming. So some of your community television stations might not have that patent for both. But I would say, even if it's only in French, reach out and try to get into that and to uh, incorporate that. So bottom line, the, 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 basically they said, look, you know, would you be interested in helping us to explore creating English programming? We don't have any, yet the reality is we have over 60,000 English-speaking people on the South Shore. We have many more bilingual. And their feed goes to the Richelieu Valley where my schools are because it's all part of the Videotron. And for those who don't have Videotron or Bell, uh, they can watch it also on Facebook, social media, and they can watch it uh, on, by going on Google to TVRS South Shore Vibe and watch any of the emissions that were, were showed. Any, uh, so I, I'm sure that, there's more questions, but guide me, please. Well, just um, I want to know about uh, how you develop the content for the show. Um, you know, I saw your guests very relevant to what's going on in your community. And then, like, how does that tie back to a CLC or your school or the English speaking community? How has that all shaped your guests that you're interviewing? So I, when the opportunity came, I went to my supervisor who was in charge of we, the four project development officers who run the CLCs. And then I went and met with some other uh, higher ups in adult education and the school board, try to get a feel, look, you know, this is the opportunity. What do you guys think? Again, sometimes when there's opportunities for projects, not everybody wants to jump on the horse and ride because everyone's busy. But at the same time in community development, sometimes opportunities don't come, the window doesn't stay open for long. Mm -hmm. So some of the higher ups I spoke to and, and colleagues, it was like, wow, this is a great opportunity because we had a ship with $500,000 of equipment, a beautiful studio that we could sail for, and to the benefit of the, our CLC, our schools, our school board, but can we also connect it to community partners, mm -hmm. citizens, and the English speaking community? That connects with everything when you talk about uh, community engagement, student success, lifelong learning, well-being, all the main goals that I learned about when I came on to CLC and learn at the beginning of 2013, it connects to all that. So we always try to connect our program with something educational every episode. We do it once a month because, again, it's a dossier for me. It probably takes me about six to ten hours a month to do. Uh, but we, you know, they provide two paid employees there. When I go to do the show, we have volunteers there. Um, so... Uh, and it's just uh, and now the machine, it's going on two years, the machine is starting to feed itself. 
And we even partner up sometimes with our partners like New Frontier School Board. We have, you know, uh, there's CLCs and school boards that work together uh, in relation to LEARN and CLCs over the years. So we've had, you know, invited Chuck Holiday on not too long ago, uh, you know, speak about, you know, what they're doing uh, on the South Shore and Chattagee, et cetera. Yeah, so, I mean, what kind of skills do you think you need to bring to the table? What do you need to bring and what, what are they bringing for you? Like, you know, for someone who maybe not, doesn't have that much experience, you, just to encourage them. Well, I would say that, first of all, the, um, the, the local television station, I believe they're in need of programming. They don't have the budgets to pay everyone to do a show. So, you know, some people who might do a show are volunteers. Uh, so they have the ability to provide some training to you, to uh, cadre uh, mount. And I would say if, you know, if you know anyone that's done theater, improv, uh, you know, even, it can even be students or uh, adults who have been, you know, done stuff on TV or drama before, you know, that are, are comfortable. Or even, you know, someone who's doing, you know, public speaking, Toastmasters. Some people or persons who might want to, you know, come on to do an interview or maybe to even consider learning to be able to host the show. And maybe they don't want to come on and do it every month, but they, they say, Hey, could, could we work with you as a CLC in Quebec? Could we come and meet with you, pitch an idea? Uh, and could you work with us to help, you know, create one episode and see how it goes. And they can provide the, you know, okay, body language, breathe in the lighting. Okay. You know, wipe your forehead. Okay. Look at the camera. Uh, you know, you can do a few takes. And it's practice makes perfect, I would say. So what have you learned in the two years that you've been uh, hosting a show about like interviewing people or? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's been, it's been amazing. So I had done some theater before and uh, improv before because we used to have a theater group for our CLC at, uh, with Tran for about four years. Uh, and that helps you to get a little bit over your shyness. But mm -hmm. I've learned, one of the things I've learned is to, uh, to be able to reach out to people, citizens and community partners to, um, you know, what are the parameters of the community TV station? So usually, for example, a community TV station, they, you know, a for-profit company, they, you know, if they, that company wants exposure on their TV station, they're usually going to have to go through them and maybe pay a fee. So I'm looking more at not-for-profit, in, uh, inviting not-for-profit interviews, uh, educational, public, um, and, uh, you know, I've learned to how to reach out to people. I've learned how to filter and say, okay, hmm, can we do this? Can we not? I have the director of the TV station who will guide me. What are the parameters of what we can and can't do? Uh, what's our territory? Uh, I've learned how to create a script at home, take pictures, a report of for having, uh, we had that laughter and yoga, a lady who does it. We, we said, okay, what's the who, what, where, when, and why of what you do? do you, what's your history? Do you have a Facebook page? Give me a few pictures. And then I make the script for each month. Uh, so I learned how to put it in there. The control room taught me how to, you know, when you do your, you have three guests. So when you, when you label your picture, it's going to be episode 15 G guest one, a guest one B. So how to put them in efficiently into a Google drive link. And so I can send all the pictures for the episode and the control room will put them into the system. I go and sit with the director before the show. Say, okay, this is the interview nine minutes long. You're going to fade to this picture. You're, and so I've learned how to do the script. I've learned how to research. I've learned how to connect with people. I've learned how to work with the, the employees and volunteers at the station with sensitivity and respect and teamwork. And um, so it's been a real nice experience. And then, you know, when they call you in to do a, a commercials or something, it, you know, you're learning how to stand and smile and pose. I mean, it's, it's kind of cool and fun. And uh, recently we didn't even know, uh, but um, my daughter, uh, they, they decided to put pictures. We have four animators who are doing four shows on the South Shore. So they put our pictures on, on, on the South Shore buses. So they're <laughs> driving around town. You got you know, my daughter takes a picture. Hey, Dad, I just saw you on a bus. So it's kind of fun. Yeah, yeah and I saw you're in the banner for their Twitter page too. So yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. I wanted to ask though, just your, I think a lot of what I've seen is the in-studio interviews. And you were just talking about what is permitted, let's say, with community television. So is there a possibility they could, you would get them to take cameras out of the studio and help record what's happening in your CLT and kind of edit it in their suite? Do they yeah. have done that and can you do that? Well, we, uh, we could do it. So that's a possibility. Uh, but I'd have to, in advance, you know, try to arrange, could they have a worker and a camera come with me? Uh, but for sure it can be done. 
uh, we try to do everything. Like for example, we had a member of parliament for, uh, for, for the South Shore who, because we're scheduled going to Ottawa, couldn't be there for our show. So, you know, we chose a different day and opened up the TV studio to go in on a different day with the crew and, and we shot her for her in the CL. Could we have gone to her office with a camera? Yeah, we could have done that too. Uh, so it is possible because uh, they have two vehicles and they have some workers who can go with me. I mean, more can I, would I be allowed to like co-opt them into making a video about my TLC? Well, that's the thing. So, you know, they're also aware of, I think they're, they're aware of not wanting to just be used, you know, so there, there's this balance. But uh, I think if you're doing something that's uh, an amazing project, say Nutrition Month, and you have smoothie bikes and the kids are biking and you're doing something that's really cool and it's on their territory, deals with well-being and community, you can bring, you know, bring them in, for example, maybe have them do a thing. And, you know, in that, have your banner CLC or have your picture of your school, get it in. Uh, wear your CLC t-shirt like we've done for our community garden and we were on TVL NIF many times and get your logos and your pictures in there and they'll be indirectly promoting it. But to just say, come in and do a commercial, you know, yeah. they know, they know when they're, they're kind of being used. That, um, it strengthened your community partnership having this platform? You know what? Uh, I mean, I just think it's it, more and more now people are contacting me. Um, you know, uh, um, not all those parts, some partnerships are connected to the RBCLC, some aren't, but you know what, it's just, uh, because it shows so often on Videotrons when they put on their, throughout the South Shore and Richelieu Valley, you know, every now and then I get parents, teachers, hey, saw your show, you know, hey, weren't our guests great, you know, we just had a student from Mountain View Code Club, he's now at the computer science program in high school, did you see he was on the show, like, uh, uh, like Ruby said before, parents uh, will share the, the page and the link of upcoming guests on our CLC page. Parents see their student or someone who used to be, and now they were on the show being interviewed. Parents are happy. They're commenting, teachers. Uh, so um, it all kind of, it's like compound interest. But, uh, you know, like our, our CLC page is, has about, you know, I remember we only had under 100 likes, and now we're almost to a 700, and I think over 600 followers. So all of this stuff compound the variety of things we do like ruby was talking about from partners and tables and and the you know tv show and the projects in the school and student success and generosity it all together really uh it really resonates for sure it's a multi-platform approach definitely um just to wrap up thank you brian very much for sharing that um we'd like to just bring it to questions would anyone like to raise their hand if they have a question for and address it to one person to wrap up for today not all at once, please. I, I can't hear. It's too much noise. I have a, I have a couple of questions. Um, maybe for to quickly for Brian, um, you, you talked about how, would you say that there are community radio stations across the province? I mean, I know Videotron happens to be the one that manages you, but I guess, do you know, like, would, is it done by region? So is it in specifically in the Richelieu Valley or you, is, is it a multi-régie? Why? Because I know there's, you know, my understanding is there's community TV stations throughout the province of Quebec. So if you're in Gaspé, if you're in Trois-Rivières, Lower North Shore, uh, Eastern Townships, Google your, your big city and Télévision Communautaire, and you'll be surprised how many I was. If you go on the Télévision Communautaire, uh, I think there's uh, a collective of 40 community ones, uh, and then there might be another collective. There's different types of collectives. So I think the one I'm part of, uh, they have a, they're like a not-for-profit with a board of directors. And one of the thinkings is the, the, to give citizens the right to, to be able to share their own stuff, but also democratic to have a kind of independent television too and independent thinking, I think. But yeah, Google your town and you're, you'll be surprised. Um, you'll find something near you and reach out to them. And worst comes to worst, you do it in French. But and with if time... It's, if it's not TV, it could also be community radio. I, I would think, it, I, you know, I don't have experience with community radio, but I know my supervisor, Juan Carlos, has done the radio for a long time. And yes, I would think that you're right, Tibby. Okay. Um, yes, Nicole. Your microphone. Just wanted to add to that. Uh, yes, there is like the radio stations, because I know out in St. Jean, we use our community radio station uh, in St. Jean. So there's, a, there's communities that do have their, their radio stations. Does anyone else have a question? If not, I have a question for Carolina we missed. Um, it was about how to write a strong call to action. Um, it's 
interesting always to when you post something to kind of ask them to follow through with something. Mm -hmm. You want to speak about that? Sure. A uh, call to action, like I mean, I'm sure most of you might know what what it is. Is basically it's 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 give them a reason why they should do what you're asking them for. So it has to be very concise, very short, very brief, and use strong uh, verbs. Uh, example, if you're posting something on Facebook, like uh, Ruby mentioned, uh, you know, visit our website so that you're asking them to go to the website and, and look at, 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 you know, the information that she's sharing. Um, if you're, you know, want them to attend an event and they need to register, well, register here. So that's what you're asking them. So a call for action is, is really, if you're telling your audience exactly what you want them to do whether it be on a, on a social media post, uh, click here, make sure you, you embed your URL properly, uh, whether it be on a, on a poster saying, you know, go visit our, our page for more information, whether it be through your newsletter, uh, you know, uh, you know, send, send this information here, click. So a call to action, every, I, I believe in today's day and age, every message that you are sending out to your community needs to have a call to action. You're asking them to do something specific. So be clear, be concise, be brief, and use strong verbs. So that's really important for any content that you're right. Off. So basically kind of like on your website, maybe if it says sign up for a newsletter, like that's a call mm -hmm. to action. Or let's say if you're using your Facebook page and it's a business page, then you can like, uh, everything you're posting can be created as an event. And then you can try and get people to mm -hmm. uh, sign up for the event. That's the call to action, but just events are a nice way to display mm -hmm. upcoming things in a calendar for people. Mm -hmm. I always check uh, calendars on Facebook for sure. And include visuals with your event. So Facebook allows you to include visuals on the event. So don't don't just put the day, whatever. Just put a, a, a visual that you know obviously uh, goes with the event. So that's 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 important. Just a question for Ruby. You talked very briefly about the the, the time management. I mean, and it's obviously people can get wrapped up in social media. Um, you obviously you you have to schedule it. Now, would you suggest that, like you said, you start in the beginning of the day? Is that the only time that you look at it is at the beginning of the day? And then, because to me, you can, you can just get, it can be just like a ongoing, you'd never stop. If you were always oh, you, you, you can get lost in it. Absolutely. I've had to take a, a detox from social media <laughs> at one point. Um, but I make, no, it's true. Um, but I make a point in the morning, at lunch, and at the end of the day. So like around four or five o'clock. I, I will check in the evening, but that's just me. You don't have to do that. <laughs> but sometimes parents will write messages in the messenger part of the Facebook, and you want to answer them as quickly as possible. Sometimes it's like, you know, is this happening tomorrow? You, you want to get back to them, and it's good for your reviews on the Facebook. Yeah. But time management-wise, um, when I get the monthly calendars at the beginning of the month for my feeder schools, I will spend maybe an hour or two making the posts on the three. And we'll block and this the extra stuff comes in you want to put it on as quickly as possible i would say i'd spend maybe oof, at least an hour an hour and a half a week and i think i'm minimizing it but yeah about an hour an hour and a half if you really want to generate that content or just go for a big block of time to to make it happen but it's worth it because, I mean, we've doubled all of our numbers. So, I mean, I have 750 people in my high school that are following us right now. Wow. And we only have 233 kids here. So, it, yeah. Um, one page, the one page that had 10 people, I have 360. And we only have 167 family kids with us. And the one that we started at Joliet Elementary, um, we have 553 people and only 300 kids so it's a great way to reach out to more than just your parents too because as you said earlier it's the grandparents right often it's they the definitely yeah. on facebook because that's how they mm -hmm. connect with grandkids and things like that so you're getting that intergenerational aspect you're bringing that intergenerational mm -hmm. aspect to into uh, to the work that you do and that can create other opportunities within the clc um over time, right? So you're engaging Absolutely. them on Facebook, but maybe there's an activity in the school one day that you need some some people, you know, other people or some seniors or something. It's a great way to uh, to to build that up. Yeah, and especially with your partners, you want to, you want to be able to give them some visibility, and it becomes a two way street. Um, on uh, one of our culture à l'école, I actually tagged the Ministry of Culture and whatever it's called, and they liked our post and they shared it on their page. Uh, we've had our post shared on uh, Teaching in Quebec, which is one of the union 
syndicates. Uh, they've shared our stuff. Um, we've had some of our posts uh, in Toronto when we did our Youth Philanthropic Initiative. They're based out of Toronto. They shared it. We had 1,800 likes on that post. Um, we get a lot of traction. The more people you can tag in whatever's happening, even if it's someone who took the pictures and you want to give them photo credit, tag that person and their people will, they, they just want to share it. They love it. So, yeah. Well, we're, we're a few minutes over, so thank you for staying. Is there anyone who wants to have a final question? We're all good. Ready to get on with our day? We didn't get to hear from you, Melissa, but welcome. <laughs> we, yeah, we actually- uh, I do have a question. Yes, Richard. Okay. Because uh, when I talk about Facebook, is we have actually it's a Facebook group that is a closed group, and I have hard problem to try to convince, con convince my principal to go like, on do a Facebook page that will be more public, and how should I go about to try to convince him to? like to go to a public page where we can reach more people. Brian, let's hear from you. You might have some experience with this. I run, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, I run two groups, uh, one for 10 years, South Shore Montreal Community Info Page Group, uh, which used to be a closed group, now has been open for many years, and Montreal Community Group, which we made many years ago for the Richelieu Valley, try to share information. Uh, but I would say that every school has a culture and working with your principal, it's kind of like trying to play music together. And if the culture right now is that they want to have a closed group for more for safety and confidentiality, I would think that you, you probably need to play along with that. Uh, and then maybe with time, if you get a new principal or um, maybe if you can sometimes show, you know, for example, the strength of what Ruby's doing with her different pages. But I would say be sensitive and, and not try to force a triangle into a square. Good advice. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? All right, well, enjoy your Tuesday. Webinar Wednesday on a Tuesday. It's a little confusing. <laughs> it's, the only when, it's the only Tuesday we're going to be doing. The rest of them should be Wednesdays. So. Yeah. Oh, no, CLC's rock. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Thanks, everyone. Bye, Thanks, bye, all. Bye, bye, CLC coordinators. Good to be with you bye. guys. Bye. Bye.